Man, there's all kinds of storylines coming out of UBS Arena after the Owls' much-needed win over the Rangers on Tuesday night. So let's talk to Greg Picker, Islanders radio color commentator and the co-host of the Talking Owls podcast. Greg, my man, I missed, a, I missed an instant classic out on the island last night. Thanks for hopping on with us. No, thanks for having me. It was, uh, it was a fun one. It had been, what was it, I think 531 days since the Islanders hosted the Rangers wow. at UBS Arena. So it was October of 2022. They only played three times last season, all in the first half of the year. The other home game this season, technically a home game for the Islanders, was the one at MetLife. So it had been a long time since the Blue Shirts had come to UBS. All right, well, there's a lot to unpack from Tuesday night's game. But let's start, obviously, with Rangers head coach Peter Laviolette saying that he thinks that Adam Pellick's hit on Minka Zibanejad was, quote, intentional. His words, not mine. You saw it. What were your thoughts on the hit and Laviolette's intentional comment? I understand that Peter Laviolette is a head coach who wants to protect his players, and he saw one of his players get hurt and wants to defend him in the post-game interview. It was an emotional game, rivalry game, and a lot going on. Obviously, the hit at the end of the game as well from Noah Thompson and Vincent Trocek got a lot of uh, extra attention as well. From our point of view, we didn't see the one on Zabanajad as being intentional. It looked like two players who were both looking at the puck that was in the outer offensive zone, and they just happened to skate into each other in the neutral zone, and Zabanajad happened to get the worst of it. But again, these two teams are going at it again on Saturday, and that's when we'll really find out how the Rangers truly felt about that hit. But guys like Adam Pellick, Noah Dobson, they're not the type of guys who want to drop the gloves. So... We'll, uh, we'll see. There could be a lot in store on Saturday, and it wasn't all that long ago where the Rangers and Devils had kind of a sideshow to start their game. I, I don't anticipate anything like that at all. This is a huge game on Saturday for both teams. Islanders really trying to solidify a playoff spot, and the Rangers trying to win a President's Trophy. Good, because I want to watch a hockey game, not a boxing match. So moving on, that's five in a row for the Owls. What were your biggest takeaways from Tuesday night's win against the top team in hockey, hockey-wise? At first period was amazing for the Islanders. One of their best periods that we have seen really all season long. It was three nothing. It could have been four five, even six nothing. Matt Barzell was stopped on a penalty shot in a minute and a half into the game, so that wasn't even one of the goals. But uh, Mike Riley, he was picked up off waivers towards the beginning of the year this year. That period yesterday, one of his best periods we've seen as an Islander, and was a, a huge part of the defense getting involved in the offense. He ends up with the goal. He could have had a, a fantastic assist, a spin arama type play. Kyle McLean was stoned by Igor Shesterkin, who had to be on his game in the first, or else it really could have gotten out of hand. And then the big thing, and we called this at the end of the period, Islanders just need to stay out of the penalty box, and it was their game. But in the second period, they didn't stay out of the penalty box, and the Rangers got back into it with a pair of power play goals. First game between these two teams at MetLife, it was the power play again that got the Rangers not just back into the game, but help them win it in overtime just to get it to that overtime. And then, then the three on three goal was scored. So when you look at the Islanders and Rangers, one more game of the regular season, a potential playoff matchup for the first time in 30 years. If the Islanders can stay at five on five, they would have a, a great chance in a series against the Rangers. But if it turns into a special teams type of affair, then the Rangers are really at a huge advantage. You mentioned Igor Shosturkin being on top of his game in the first. Uh, Simeon Varlamov was on top of his game, 34 shots against, only let up two goals. Uh, is he and Ilya Sorokin the top two, uh, the top goalie duo in the league heading into the playoffs and why? There are a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference in particular that I can think of that would want mm. to say the same thing. They're up there without a okay. doubt. And we saw what Varlama was able to do a couple of years ago in the postseason, allow the honors to go on back-to-back -back runs, really, with his guidance, Ilya Sorokin. Uh, last year, second best goaltender goal in the National Hockey League, according to the Vezina Trophy vote. But you look at the Rangers, Igor Shesterkin, and Jonathan Quick, they've been fantastic. The Bruins feel that they have the best goaltending tandem in the National Hockey League, the reigning Vezina Trophy winner in, in Linus Olmark, although he, like Sorokin, hasn't quite been at that level this season, but they also have Jeremy Swayman. Florida Panthers love what they have, and Sergei Bobrovsky was pivotal in getting the Panthers to the Stanley Cup final last year. So there are, there are quite a few teams in the Eastern Conference that can all vie for that, and the Islanders are absolutely one of them. And if Ilya Sorokin gets back to the Ilya Sorokin we saw last season and early this year, then I don't know who you're going with to start a potential playoff series for the Islanders, but Varlamov has been as great these past couple weeks as we have seen him in, in a little bit of time. He did have some injury trouble early this season, 
but there's a big reason why Lou Lamorello went and uh, re-signed him to another four-year deal this past offseason, and, and we're seeing exactly why right now. I love giving shout-outs to guys who hit milestones. Noah Dobson recorded two assists on the night and became the first Islander defenseman with at least 70 points and at least 60 assists in the season since the legendary Dennis Potvin. Uh, give Dobson his flowers, man. How big has he been for this squad this season? It's fitting. Dennis Potvin was in the building last night, and he's often there, especially when the Islanders and Rangers are, uh, are playing. He's often uttered at Madison Square Garden when the Islanders <laughs> and Rangers even aren't playing. But uh, not just... Uh, Dennis Poppin, the only other Islander defenseman to have ever hit 70 points in a season, was Jean Poppin, Dennis's brother, who mm. he did it one season, but still, there's now a second last name that you can say has hit 70 points in a season from the blue line. And, and Noah Dobson, he did score back to back game winning goals earlier this week and has just been a huge part of now this five game winning streak for the Islanders. And even earlier in the year, he was in talk for not necessarily Norris Trophy winner but certainly a Norris Trophy finalist with the point totals he was putting together he'll get some votes I don't know if he'll be a, a top three finalist because the the assist totals did kind of take a, a little bit of a hiatus but they're back at it now and to hit 70 points from the blue line just absolutely fantastic and he like Mike Riley who we talked about in the first uh, segment here those are two guys that are always looking to jump down the wing and throw the puck towards net and it often creates a tip opportunity or chaos in front and leads the goals for the Islanders. Real quick before I let you go, they have four games left to close out the season. How do the Isles keep it rolling? First of all, if you keep getting the same goaltending, then that's a pretty good chance that you're going to win the majority of these last four games and get yourself that three spot in the Metropolitan Division, a likely date again with the Carolina Hurricanes, although the Hurricanes are still within a catching distance of the Rangers if things break their way and have a chance to win the Metro. But uh, the odds say that that's probably not going to happen. But it's uh, it's been a lot of fun to see this turnaround now these, these last couple of weeks because you go back and just two weeks ago, a lot of people thought that the, the Islanders had no shot of making the playoffs, but they turned it on at the right time, looking for their second six-game winning streak of the season as they go up Thursday night against the Montreal Canadiens at home. Real fast, shout out to pe tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, we're on the uh, the Islanders Radio Network, uh, ESPN Radio, usually 1050, but of course streaming online. WRHU 88.7 FM if you're in Nassau County, but uh, NHL app anywhere you can really listen to the NHL radio broadcast. The NHL is a, a great setup there that you can tune into any one of the 32 broadcasts whenever a game is going on. And uh, thank you also for shouting out Talking Isles because that's our, our podcast where we uh, – feature usually former alumni of the Islanders that actually played, but broadcasters and other factors and, and key members from the team's history. That's at NewYorkIslanders.com slash Talking Isles, talking without the G or wherever you listen to your podcast. <laughs> I know you got dad duties to get back to, man, so appreciate you hopping on with us today. Thanks for having me.